Yeah. So um, the thing to keep in mind with the Bolex cameras and lenses is uh, never to um, force any um, action that you're taking on it. Uh, if um, if you want to adjust something um, or screw something on, there's generally speaking there shouldn't ever need to be any force. It should just kind of um, there's a, a kind of a click that. Um, whatever you're doing might make, or it, um, you know, you can feel the tension and um, of what you're doing, and it should just kind of work. So, some examples would be, for instance, pulling, um, turning your motor on and off. When you're turning it off, it you should just be able to. You can kind of feel this tension, and it'll just turn off. And if it's not working, it may be that you know this has somehow been stuck on this position or something like that and it's harder for you to force that in so okay it doesn't work on this camera but some of the other cameras have that issue um, same with um, changing the shutter angle uh, you just pull this up and then it should just gently go down to that position or whichever adjustment you're making um, Same with, actually, this is an important one. Uh, if you're um, wanting to move the turret, if you're wanting to um, turn the turret, just uh, make sure you don't just force this through. Um, you know, if that doesn't pull, then keep in mind that this, this red um, lined body cap is actually, has this little, shaft there which you know stops you from being able to turn this so once that is taken out you can turn that with ease and see here that that is um in blocking the path so you'll need to loosen it and in order to loosen that part there's this little screw here and you just turn it anti-clockwise as a general rule when you're unscrewing something, you're turning it anti-clockwise. If you're screwing something tight, you're turning it clockwise. So you turn it anti-clockwise. And then this should just allow you to then turn that and then you're able to um, change your taking lens. And you can kind of hear the little click as this little notch kind of engages there. So there's that click, you know, there's the click there. And you can also turn it to this lens here, which if this, this one doesn't click, so you'll have to just view it from your um, viewfinder. So just click that into place and then you can turn it clockwise to screw the body cap back on. Um, so now I'm going to do one on um, checking the ground glass and cleaning it and just showing you where the ground glass is. Uh, the ground glass allows you, um, it's part of the Bolex kind of optics system uh, where um, you're viewing the image um, through uh, the reflex uh, prism here and uh, you're seeing it through the ground glass which is um, located underneath the, the taking lens. So um, as I mentioned before, um, well, in order to access the ground glass, we need to turn this turret all the way to this other position so that we can get inside. Um, and to do that, make sure you take off uh, the locking body cap. Um, make sure that this is loose here so that you can turn the turret easily. Um, and also you need to take out your filter holder and your filter holder is here. So you just gently pull that out. And generally speaking, there shouldn't be a filter in there. Put it in a nice clean spot. Um, and then you just turn the turret. You can see the ground glass there. Just keep turning it all the way to here. Be very careful not to touch the ground glass 
pull the lever over to this side and now using just use your finger and don't use you know a sharp object um, or anything else you just gently lift this up um, and then underneath you'll be able to see the variable shutter the bollocks variable shutter so you can grab a blower and just give it a good clean uh, both at the back of the ground glass at the shutter don't use anything um, harsher than a blower don't use a cloth don't use a toothbrush uh, don't use um, canned air uh, you know a blower is really more than sufficient um, and then just gently um, making sure you don't touch the ground glass at all gently pull this back down and it will just click down and you can give it a good clean here never touch this prism um, th uh, this is it's very important that you don't touch the ground glass um, because it's the you know it's the bit of glass that's closest to your film and whatever kind of um, dust or marks on it is going to affect um, the sharpness um, of your image the most um, and now you can just uh, turn it back until it makes a click and it'll lock there and put your body cap back on screw it tight and then also just make sure you put your filter holder back as well so that just slots here there's a slot there that will just sit flush and if you're worried that you haven't um, pushed, whether you've pushed the filter holder in all the way, you can just um, take off your body cap and you, there you can just see that, you know, you are, you've sat that flush. Um, so another issue that you might have is... Um, when you're trying to film and you can't actually see anything through your, um, uh, the eyepiece. Um, and in that case, there are a couple things that could have happened. Uh, you may not have a lens um, on your taking lens. So just keep in mind that this is your taking lens and that light needs to reach into there in order for you to see it. So just check that you don't have, you know, um, just make sure that you do have a lens on the taking lens position uh, that you know the lens isn't um, doesn't have a lens cap on it and then usually if neither of those things are the cases you've probably got um, your dowser up so this is the up position you just need to make sure that the dowser is down so that you can see through the light path oh through the light path towards your eye. It is also, though, a good idea to close that when you're filming um, and you don't have your eye pressed against the eye cup because that way, you're by closing this, you're stopping light from um, leaking in from that side. Now, this is uh, just a little about uh, um, some troubleshooting. Um, just opening the lid here, just to mention, so once you've loaded your film, if you've got film loaded in there, and you're um, trying to put the lid on your camera, um, it should just sit really nicely, and you should be able to, um, you know, have everything closed off. If you ever have any issues, there are a few reasons why you couldn't close the lid, you can't put the lid back on your Bolex. Um, so for one thing, uh, when you put the lid on, this here will automatically disengage that loop former. Um, but if your pressure plate here is pulled out even just a little bit, it's not going to allow you to put the lid back on. So never force, if you're ever trying to put the lid on and you can't, don't force it, first of all. Check that the pressure plate is indeed tucked in, like snug on the on the aperture plate. Also, noticed here with your lid that there are these little claws here that 
retract and come out in order to lock it. Sometimes you may have just left that in its locking position, which is why you can't push that lid on. So it should just gently sit in and so you need to retract those little feet and then have it like so. And then now it will just sit in really easily and you can close it. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how to um, remove the pressure plate. Sometimes you might have a bunch of film stuck, um, you know, curled up on these sides and by uh, taking this pressure plate off it will allow you to just kind of um, get rid of that um, damaged film. So what you do is uh, you have this little lever here, you just gently, you can just pull it up with your fingers um, and then pull it out uh, and then you can see that's your pressure plate there it's held in by this screw here so you just need to turn this left left to unscrew and then you'll feel it kind of get to the point where you can just pull it out and then that just comes out so you can see the this is your pressure plate. It's really important to keep this clean. Um, don't put any sort of sharp or rough um, material on it because that's going to um, come in direct contact with your film and scratch it up. Um, so always make sure that's clean. Make sure your um, aperture plate is clean. You can use a blower on it and just get rid of any dust that tends to collect um, as it travels through this film path. And so to put it back, uh, just make sure you slot that back into there. You can kind of feel it tuck into place and will just slip in. And then turn it clockwise, just always make sure you tighten it after you've taken it out. And just have it taut but not overly tight because otherwise you'll damage that. And then this here you can just push it in and there's your pressure plate um, against that aperture plate. Okay, so I'm just going to show you with the um, rewind um, crank. Uh, so to wind up your motor, you just turn it um, anti-clockwise um, and then lock it into this little shaft there. And you push it in and that's locked and you can run fill without any issue and you can see that that is turning there um, in order to um, you can also actually remove this um, motor handle um, but um, sometimes you may have removed it by accident but it doesn't mean you've broken the camera you can just um, um, screw it back on. So if you want to remove it or you've accidentally removed it, you would have done this. You would have turned it clockwise and see how that is um, unscrewed there. And there's a thread here so you can see that it goes back into this thread here, this hole here and not that one. So you can just see that it won't fit into this one and you just push it back in and it's really, oh sorry, wrong way, turn it um, anti-clockwise and then um, that is now taut and you can rewind the motor again or wind up the motor.